Hi, I'm Simon Keith. By all accounts, I should not be here talking to you today. More than 30 years ago, when I was 21 years old, I was chasing my dream to play for Canada in the World Cup, when all of a sudden my life changed and would never be the same. I was told if I didn't get a heart transplant, I would be dead in six months. That story and the story of my recovery and ultimate triumph is what I'd like to share with you. It will make you laugh, it may make you cry, but it is sure to inspire. This is a story of incredible luck, world-class perseverance, and unexplainable fate that will move you, empower you, challenge you, and inspire you to realize your full potential. Our deepest fear is it's not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we are powerful beyond measure. We're just scared to death to be that person. So how do we unlock that? So when I came out of high school, I was fortunate enough to sign a professional contract over in London. Uh, got to play against all the big guys, you know, Arsenal and all Chelsea and all those fun guys. And on the horizon was the World Cup. Biggest sporting event in the world. Canada was going to qualify and um, it was the dream. I was going to be on the team. I was going to be in Mexico City. And then something really strange began to happen. I started to, I started to get sick. So instead of uh, in 1986 in, in July, instead of standing on a soccer field in Mexico playing for Canada in the World Cup, I got to do this. You want to talk about a moment. When you're 21 years old and they're about to wheel you into the operating room and they're going to take your heart out of your chest and they're going to put somebody else's in, that's a moment that gives you perspective. So when I woke up, we got a decision to make. We'll talk about fear. We'll talk about fear. Um, got a decision to make. What are you going to do? Are you going to crawl into a, into a ball and sit in the corner, or are you going to, going to go for it? So I talked to Sir Terrence, and he said these words to me. He said, Simon, the goal for you and heart transplantation is to live the life you led prior to being sick. Holy cow, talk about empowering words for me. So great, so that's my barrier now. Now, now I've got the barrier. This is, this is three years exactly to the day of my transplant, and uh, I was drafted number one overall in the Professional Soccer League in the United States. He's a great speaker, and uh, he will definitely change people's lives. Well, I think, I think with Simon, it's just what you see is what you get. He, he's just an authentic person and tells you how it is. Just listen and you, and you just reevaluate what you want to do with your life and what you could do with your life. I knew that in 2011, it, had been, it was going to be 25 years of having somebody else's heart inside your chest. I still didn't know whose it was. Here's my donor, his name is John Edward, and uh, you know, in, in my kind of stories, these are the heroes, right? I mean, this poor kid didn't have a chance at life at 17 years old, died on that field, and allowed me to get a second chance and live my dreams. This is Roger, and Roger is the father of the young man who passed away, and whose heart I was the grateful recipient of. This is what happened with me and Roger. When Roger got a chance to see me and touch me and feel me and meet Sean and meet our family, he actually said the words, Simon, I feel liberated from the pain. Our final stop of the day was I got to go and see John and his final resting spot. We'll talk about a moment in life when you get to really conquer your fear. This is it. This is it. What do you say, right? How do you say thank you? How do you say thank you to someone who literally gave you everything? Everything. Everything. My career, my kids, my wife, my children, standing here today. Everything. And so I had an epiphany year and I said to myself, I'm gonna I'm gonna be the guy that I want that I've always wanted to be, that I've always sort of been, but haven't really grabbed the brass ring. I'm gonna be the guy. I'm gonna say it out loud. I'm gonna be the guy. 
I'm going to be the guy. I'm going to be special. I'm going to change the world. That's what I said. I went on a mission to learn about organ donation and transplantation and how the systems work. And I went and sat on the governing board in Nevada and then I became the COO of the organization. We turned a terrible organization that was 53rd out of 58 in the country in terms of organ donation in per capita and we made it to the number one not only in the United States but around the world in four years. I find myself advocating around the world now. I've become a, uh, an expert and because I made a promise to John that I'm going to change the world, this is how I'm doing it. I find myself a sort of semi-intellectual jock from Victoria Bridge, Columbia, speaking at the White House, to the Congress and Senate about organ donation. How does that happen? How does that happen? Because I chose to take my fear and really embrace it. I understood that I am not worried about failing. I'm really more worried about succeeding. What happens if you really succeed? Six months ago, I was on the way to the biggest sporting event on the planet. And today, I can't run 100 yards. I can't run 100 yards. It was the defining moment in my life. And I learned at that moment to embrace fear have the courage to not live by anybody else's rules but my own.